My father's teenage years were spent in 19 and 19, listening to grown men talking about the cursed English spleen. <coughs> they spoke about the GPO and Ireland's heart was sore, but the death of our own leader stung him to the very core. It was early in his youthful years a rebel streak did show. <coughs> Hearing men make solemn promises the British to overthrow, they would sacrifice both life and limb, a republic to define, and many's the <coughs> Irish volunteer died sadly in his prime. My father's house, built by his dad, was solid and first rate. The front was plastered in mortar dash, on the back hung a cladding slate. The roof was covered with killaloos, the windows slid up and down, and on the floor, inside the big hall door, lay tiles in sand belt brown. Well, to finish off this house he built, my father, my granddad couldn't wait, to fit a brass lock to the door on a solid brass lock plate. He paid a fortune for this lock, for he knew it would be secure. It took Lockie Smith a good two days for to fit it to the door. My granddad was a Redmondite who supported his home rule bill. He wore a stiff starch collared shirt and a bowler hat as well. But his politics were old and stale, home rule had not been won. And Ireland now was changing fast, and it was time the Brits were gone. Uncle Mike worked for the government, collecting poor law rates. He hid his takings in a box marked willow pattern plates. For well he knew the danger his collection would tempt men, who were desperate <coughs> to find the cause, and cared not from where they came. But behind the scenes, two teenage boys were hatching out a plot. For to rob their brother's poor law rates, making sure not to be called. But soon they found that he, like them, supported the rebel cause. And he said he'd help them rob himself and to hell with England's laws. Be, uh, a, a blow was struck for Ireland then when Grandad went to bed. And to stave off police suspicion, he staged a big break in instead. Then the blame would shift to the highwaymen seen lately round Kilmore. And with foul of forethought and vile intent, they attacked the big front door. <laughs> with hatchets, bars, and hammers too, in a hurried mode they wield. But Grandad's big brass lock and lock was proven slow to yield. Then a heavy sledge was then procured, then a stick of dynamite. And according to what me dad told me, it was some bloody bang that night. <laughs> My granddad was blown out of bed and called out to God for help. But me father robbed the poor law box, but he broke the willow delf. A blow was struck for Ireland, though cruel England to frustrate. But sacrifice was the big brass lock and the willow pattern plates. My granddad, incandescent now, he quizzed the boy's intent as to why they bombed the front door lock, knowing what to him it meant. Could they not see with their own two eyes a break in to secure that a flimsy timber thumb latch? held the unlocked kitchen door. <coughs> the news of this great event spread around the whole southeast. When my granddad saw the lighter side, his support for home rule ceased. Lord George recalled his government new tactics to devise, but the rebel heart in Wexford men is helped to galvanize. <laughs>